Okay, I think this is going to be my last Chapter 5 video for just enough physics, forces of constraint. So, uh, just to summarize here, we are we looked at forces that where you could calculate everything about that force, um, such as gravitational force or the spring force. Uh, and now we're looking at forces of constraint where you don't actually know what the force is. The force is determined by the motion. So that is a little strange. Uh, the most common, there's three fric uh, forces of constraint that we'll see. They are the normal force, the frictional force, and tension. And in the last video, I did Atwood's machine. So here is the half Atwood machine. So, oh, this M2. Okay, so in the Atwood machine, I had both masses hanging over a pulley. In the half Atwood machine, only one mass is hanging over the pulley, and the other is now on a frictionless table. So, again, we need to draw free body diagrams. Let's start with mass one, and we have this. I have the gravitational force, and it doesn't really matter which one's greater, but let's just say mass one is greater. Uh, the, it's going to be M1G, that's the gravitational force. There's a normal force, N. And then there is a tension in the string pulling this way. I'll call that T1. That's it. For mass 2, I only have two forces acting on it because there's no surface. So it only has the gravitational force M2G and the tension, I'll call it T2. Like that. Now... Like before, this is the same string, so it has to have the same tension in it, even though these are in different directions. So the magnitude of T1 is equal to the magnitude of T2, because it's the same string. Okay, so now let's do our some of the forces. In this case, um, the, the y direction is boring. There's nothing there, right? Because it's not accelerating in the y direction, and I don't really care about the normal force anyway, so I'm just not going to even write that down. So let's just write F net x1. That's the net forces for block 1 in the x direction, and I get t. I'm going to call it t now because I'm just, I know the magnitude, and that's it. And that's going to be equal to m1a. And this is going to accelerate that way, okay, because the block's pulling on it. That seems to be clear. Now for the other one, we're going to do the y direction because there's no x forces, f net y2. So here I have t minus M2G equals M2. Now, this is going to be the same acceleration because they're tied together by a string, but this is going to be accelerating down. So this is going to be negative M2A. So again, oops, I have two equations, two unknowns. This one's pretty easy to solve. So I have T. Uh, I'm going to substitute this in down here. So I get M1A minus M2G equals negative M2A. Um, so I want to get the M's on the same side, so let's add M2A to both sides. So I get M1A plus M2A, and then add that to both sides, equals M2G. And now I'm going to factor out the A. Now I'm going to divide both sides by M1 plus M2, and I get A equals M2G over M1 plus M2. And let's check again. Is it positive? I've already said it should be positive because I assume the direction. That's positive, 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 positive. Everything's positive, so it can't be negative. Is it less than the acceleration of a free-falling object? Because this has this is going to be accelerating less than that. Uh, so this M1 plus M2 is greater than M2, so obviously this is going to be smaller than G. What if this is 1,000, 1 million kilograms, and this is 1 kilogram? Then the it should be super, 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 super tiny acceleration. So if M2 is 1, and this is a million and 1, yeah, it's pretty small. What if I switch these? Then it should accelerate at G, because this 1 kilogram mass is not really going to do much up there. So if M2 is a million divided by a million and one, yeah, that works. So everything looks like it's working. Um, okay, there's one other way to think about this. I can think about this as one system. So I can say F net 
equals ma, and this is in one, one direction. So in this case, what force is making this thing accelerate? Well, it's the weight of m2. So the F, the net force is going to be m2g. That's the force that pulls in this whole system. And that's going to be equal to the mass times acceleration, but the whole thing ha it has to accelerate. So the mass is the total mass. So it's going to be m1 plus m2a. So if you solve this for a, you get the same darn thing. Check that out. You like that? Okay, one, I'm going to do two variations. I'm going to show you two variations, okay, because these come up. And I'm not going to solve them for you. I'm going to tell you how to solve them. The first one is the same problem with friction. So if there's friction, then this diagram changes. This one changes to this. So now I do need to know the normal force. So I could say F net Y1 is going to be N minus M1G, and that's equal to zero. So N equals M1G. And then I can use that to find the frictional force. F friction is going to be mu K times N, which is going to be M1G. Now in the X direction, I get F net X1. It's going to be T minus this frictional force, mu K M to 1. 1 G equals M1 A. So that equation is a little bit different. The other equation for mass 2 in the Y direction, F net Y2 is the same. It's going to be T minus M2 G equals negative M2 A. So now you solve these two equations to unknowns and get a little bit different answer. There's another fun problem that looks like this. Okay, so this is essentially the same thing. It's just that now for this one, you have the normal force and the gravitational force are in different directions and then the tension is that way. Uh, that, that mass is the same. Um, and then you could add friction to that too and it gets even more complicated. But I'll leave that for another day. I think I'm going to end up chapter five right here and we're going to go on to some other. I don't even remember what the next chapter is. But I will see you in the next chapter. It's going to be great. Talk to you later. Bye.